Hey everybody, it's Drew Ace Doctor, and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at expanding beyond basic movement in menus, the last video that I recorded. We are here on Port Tressler, which is a space station in orbit above Microtech in the Stanton system. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to take advantage of the additional services and resources that are available to you in most spaceports, Lagrange points and star, star bases. Here we are in Port Tressler, which is a starbase above the planet's surface. At each starbase, you're going to find a few things in common. You're going to find eateries, a food court, a galleria, and basic medical services. Beyond that, the configuration of different starbases changes. Now, the importance of medical clinics or hospitals is that when your character becomes injured, you may suffer injuries that can't be healed by a basic med pack or a hemazole pen. So think of your think of uh, your basic health packs as being stims. Having a health gun as being a slightly better version of that, like the equivalent of a Star Trek medical tricorder. And in situations where you have suffered grievous bodily harm or you've taken head injuries, um, you're going to have to come to a medical clinic, medical clinic or hospital in order to receive treatment. Now, to check yourself in for treatment, you're going to come to reception and check in. This Click the patient check-in option here on this kiosk, and it's going to give you a room to navigate to. So in this case, we're going to room three. So you're going to come in here, and you're going to look at the room numbers, and you're going to find your way to the room number that they've given you. In this case, I want room number three. Two, three. You're going to come over here, and you're going to try and open the door. If you've done, the, done this correctly and gone to the right room, the door will open for you. Now, you're going to be in a basic examination room. You can see that there's some basic things around. You cannot interact with most of these things. Um, these aren't supplies that you can pick up and take with you. But you're going to find that there is a medical bed and several uh, menus with which you can interact. Now, interacting with the medical bed will give you the option to lie down. Lying down does a few things. The bed will immediately begin healing you if you've taken any damage. In addition to this, if you are thirsty or hungry, it will provide you basic sustenance and raise you to a level of 99% um, hydration and food satisfaction. So basically, you've taken enough basic IV fluids that you're neither starving nor thirsting. And one of the things that happens, though, with this is that when you replenish your thirst and hunger in this way, um, those stats will stay visible on your screen because they're not as satisfying as eating food or drinking fluids, um, and they deplete faster. So constantly coming back to a Calto RX or down to a hospital is not going to give you the same experience or the same sort of longevity in the field as simply stopping for a bite to eat. Now, the other thing that you get from uh, clinics and medical centers is that you can access insurance services. When you are at a space station and you want to move your base of operations to that space station, go to the nearest medical clinic, open the regeneration menu underneath the insurance signs, and choose to transfer your imprint to that station. Right now, my primary residence facility is where I will respawn if I haven't set my location elsewhere. Currently, my regen location is the Kelto RX clinic above uh, Hurston. So that's at Everest Harbor. And I want to keep that there. I just happen to be visiting Port Tressler for the day. But you can transfer your clone imprint to the station that you are at. That way, if you are you know, going through a contract and you get blown up or somebody engages you in PvP and you die, when your clone responds, you will appear at that uh, particular clinic at the space station. Now, one of the things about this is that when you restart, you will appear in a medical gown and in your local inventory, you will have a basic flight suit and a basic helmet. They are good enough for you to go out into the vacuum of space, but you don't come back with any of your armor and you don't come back with any of your those things are left where your body was. When you need to resupply on medical supplies, you can come to the pharmacy, access the kiosk, and buy things like hemozole or med pens. These are basically a, sh a short stem that restores your health. 
oxypens, which it boosts the amount of oxygen in your blood and in your suit and your ability to carry oxygen. This, these are particularly helpful if you get a hole in your suit and you start seeing your, your suit O2 depleting. Uh, different steroids like the corticopen, opiopen, detox pen, you pen, these are these each address different physical ailments. So say you've fallen from a great height and your legs are showing a, a leg injury, which is displayed for you by looking at your Moby glass. So if your leg lights up red, you know, you've injured a leg and it will slow you or cause you to not be able to move very quickly. You can come into a clinic and receive medical treatment to have your leg restored. But if you happen to have the correct um, uh, correct uh, stims with you, in this case, opiopen, you can relieve symptoms associated with impaired mobility or partial paralysis. Basically, think about uh, think about it as being like taking amphetamines so that you are amped up and you don't notice the pain as much and it kind of relieves your symptoms, but your leg is not actually getting any better. It's just kind of a band-aid for it until you can get to a hospital. So having the right stims with you is a big part of being effective in the game, especially if you're new to the game and likely to take an injury. Now, when you come to the station elevators, and I just want to show these off for a second, you'll always have the same color paint. So there's always orange, sort of the safety orange around the elevators to let you know that these are the core elevators for the space station. And different space stations will have different offerings in terms of floors that you can go to. The two common ones that you'll find in nearly every space station are a Galleria and Hangers and Habs. Hangers and Habs is basically where you'll call your ship up from and leave, where you'll find the clinic, and where you'll find basic food vendors. The Galleria is where you'll find the food court and additional food vendors, where you'll find shops for buying armor, weapons, ship upgrades, ship weapons, and so on. And there's often either a cargo center or a refinery. We're gonna start by going to the Galleria. When you enter the Galleria, you're almost always gonna be greeted by exactly this music and some basic voice advertisements that are coming at you. And you'll find a, a selection of urban stores. Platinum Bay sells uh, ship upgrades. Uh, you'll find different weapons vendors will sell personal and uh, ship-based weapons. You'll find several armor vendors in different stations and not all stations have exactly the same um, things for sale. So in some you may find only a selection of light or medium armor. At others you may find the full range. There are just a few space stations or, or star bases around the Stanton system that sell um, old or hot weather uh, suits. These are the Novikov armor, which is what I'm standing in front of right now. So the oops, Novikov armor here, Novikov Exploration, is the cold weather suit. It is good down to minus 220 degrees Celsius and as high as plus 70 degrees Celsius. So this is a this is a suit that if you're going to worlds where uh, worlds or moons where the atmosphere is extremely cold, you'll want to wear this because it will prevent you from having a very short window of time that you can be outside. Um, in the armor that I am presently in, this is medium armor with a light helmet. If I was to step outside in this, I would have a survivability time of about eight to 10 minutes in very, very cold temperatures. Whereas if I was wearing the Novikov, I wouldn't feel a thing. Now the Novikov and the Pembroke armor, which is the heavy armor for hot weather, has basically the inverse stats. It's good to minus 70, good to up to plus 220 degrees Celsius. Um, they are worn like an undersuit with a helmet. This is not extra armor that you have to bolt on top of wearing an undersuit. Whereas on my character right now, these are each individually different pieces of armor, different helmet, different boots, different arm or um, greaves, all onto my body with a backpack and different equipment. Now, to purchase armor and equipment, and the same goes for weapons or ship modules, you're going to go up to the kiosk that's in the store. And when you interact with it, you're gonna, the first thing you're gonna choose is where do you want the things you're buying to go? 
usually going to default to your backpack if you have one equipped, but you're going to want to set it to the local inventory for the place where you're at, because these things often are too big to fit in your backpack by themselves, especially if your backpack is presently full. And if you try to buy something and it says destination has no room available, it's because it's defaulting to your backpack. Just change it to the name of the place that you're at, and that'll solve that problem for you. From there, you can choose the category of thing that you're wanting to buy. In this case, I have the options of undersuits, armor, and miscellaneous or utility items. If I look at undersuits, it's just going to show me the available selection of undersuits and what they look like. Here we have the uh, Arctic Digital undersuit, Novakov armor that I was discussing just a moment ago, and several different colors and, and appearances of these undersuits. Now, undersuits have a basic temperature rating. Um, they by themselves are not a great source of protection, except in the case of the Nokov, because as I mentioned before, this is specifically designed as a cold, cold wear suit. Um, everything else is a basic minus 30 to plus 60 range suit. They're designed to keep you alive uh, and comfortable in moderate extremes of temperature. When you add armor on top of an undersuit, uh, and again, the Novikov is a complete suit by itself. You can't put any additional armor on top of it other than a helmet. When you add armor, you're adding additional thermal layers over top of your undersuit, and they have a more expanded temperature range or rating. So they will mitigate some of the effects of extreme temperature and increase your survivability. They also increase your survivability against attack. So if you're getting shot at or you take blows from somebody, um, you're gonna survive a lot longer if you're wearing armor. Now, armor can be a little bit expensive depending on what type you're buying, but the price will quickly stack up the more armor you're wearing. The basic chess pieces will run anywhere between 850 Alpha UEC up to as high as 5 to 10,000 Alpha UEC, depending on what it is that you're wearing. Backpacks typically average between 1500 to 2000 Alpha UEC, and they come in different capacities. The standard is 41,000 or 50,000 Alpha UEC for a light backpack. Mediums and heavies can go up to 125,000. Um, now, if we take a look at backpacks specifically, one of the things that you'll find is that the Pembroke and Novikov backpacks are the largest that you will typically find and be able to wear, but they are only able to be used with those exact suits. So they are, they are a backpack that matches the suit to which they belong. And at 125,000 micro SCU, what that means is that you're sitting at about 12% of a one standard cargo unit box. It's still a lot to be able to carry personal inventory, and these are great for when you want to do hand mining because ores take up a lot of space when you're mining gems from rocks, um, but uh, they're also quite useful when you're doing missions. The challenge with the Novikov and the Pembroke is that they're very bulky suits to wear, and they can sometimes impact your ability to aim down sights when you're using weapons. Now, when it comes to buying things other than armor or miscellaneous items like, you know, uh, med pen and oxy pens, which you'll find at most shops because they're extremely useful for survival, um, you will also find categories respective to the shop that you're in. So if I come over here to Platinum Bay and start looking at ship components, you'll see that there are kiosks inside the door. I have one there, I have one over here. And the menu options will still be the same. I'll have the option to choose where I want my purchased items to go. And I can choose the subcategories and subfamilies of uh, items that I want to purchase. So if I look at specifically systems, it's going to show me um, everything that is a core component for a ship. I can sort between coolers and power plants, quantum drives, shield generators, and so on. If I'm looking at utility items, it will show me things like add-ons for my different ship items. So here's a fuel pod for the Starfarer, which is a ship refueling uh, ship. It's basically just a big gas hauler uh, for other vessels. And if I go into systems, if weapons are available, it will show me vehicle weapons, but typically it will be weapons vendors that sell ship weapons and personal weapons. Um, so these different functions are separated between the different stores and they are respective to each and every station, a little bit different in terms of where they're available. 
there are multiple levels to these stores. You can go down the stairs and find additional stores or sitting areas. And typically on these levels, you will find a uh, administration office for the station that you were at. The administration office is where you can sell things that you have found in the field. Typically, it will be uh, resources, mined ores, gases, trade goods, and so on. Anything that can be sold or bought at a specific shop, like a weapon shop, can be sold there. So if you if you can buy guns at a weapon shop, you can sell guns and ammunition at a weapon shop. Um, so, you know, looting, you may have to visit a few stores to sell everything out of your inventory. Um, if you have items in your ship inventory, typically those things will be sold to the administration office. Things that aren't typically sold at weapons or armor stores. Um, when you go to the food court, you'll have a selection of different foods. Really, the type of food that you buy and eat or drink doesn't really matter, uh, whether it's a of coffee or uh, an energy drink, whether you're eating burgers or hot dogs or noodle boxes, it really, really doesn't matter. The big thing is just making sure that you replenish your hydration, you replenish your food levels so that uh, you reach 100% and those icons disappear from your field of view. Now, additional services that you can access are things such as the refinery and cargo center. If you have been out doing ship mining or hand mining and you want to refine the goods that you've gathered down into something that can be sold for a higher value, you're going to want to go to a station that has a refinery. If you are wanting to get the tools to do that mining or to um, start collecting resources, you're going to want to go to a space station that has a cargo center because that's where they will sell those goods. You'll also find that cargo centers is where you can rent ships or in-game credits and where you can find things like mining suits of armor. This guy here. Utility backpacks, which typically have a slightly higher uh, capacity to them. Multi-tools for mining, cutting lasers, or tractor beam functions. And clothing for general wear inside of stations. You can also buy boxes for transporting goods. Um, those standardized cargo boxes are good for hauling loot with you that you have found in sites. Um, do note, though, that you'll want to have multi-tool and a tractor beam attachment for it so that you can haul them around because they are too heavy to lift. When you access the cargo shop, the same thing, set your location where you want your goods to go to, choose your category of thing that you're looking for, or if you know exactly what you're looking for, like you wanted to buy here the Errol armor, you can actually use the universe search, just type the word Errol and it will show you the backpack, helmet, full suit of armor, and you're good to go. Just purchase one of these either individually, like click buy, or click on the item description, choose buy, and it's going to give you a choice of how many you wish to purchase and show you the total price. To go back, let's log out. Now, the other thing that you can do, and again, I'll change this back to the station, is that you can see that here there's an option for personal weapons. In the cargo center, the personal weapons category is strictly reserved for multi-tools. Because obviously they don't sell weapons here, but what other category do you to put a multi-tool into? The standard attachments include the OxyTorch cutter attachment, which presently is, doesn't really have an associated gameplay for it, um, but you'll use this for salvaging at some later point. The orbit mining attachment, which is the default included attachment with the multi-tool. This is what allows you to mine with hands hand mining, basically you're using the multi-tool to mine. And then the true hold tractor beam attachment. I'm going to tell you right now, you won't want to leave a space station without having a multi-tool and a tractor beam attachment. When you attach your tractor beam attachment to your multi-tool, an orbit mining attachment will more or like more or less always likely appear in your inventory because you've taken the default attachment out and you've replaced it with a tractor beam. Now, the tractor beam has a certain weight capacity, so there is a maximum capacity that you can carry, and there is a maximum distance from which you can grab something. So uh, do be aware of that, and I'll cover the intricacies of using tractor beam and hand mining and other modules in another video, but 
do note, you're going to want one of these. You're going to want one of these. So make sure that you have a little bit of credit set aside to pick those up because they are indispensable and you definitely want to have them. That so far pretty much covers basic services that you'll access. I will talk about mining and refining in its own video at a later time. Now, when it comes to actually accessing your ship, you're going to go back to the hangars and habs. You're going to exit the elevators and you're going to go out towards the area that is marked security. Typically, it'll be out past the hot dog or, or taco stand. There we go. There is security. When you go through these metal detectors or what appear to be turnstile detectors, you're going to enter an area here that has all these different kiosks around it. These kiosks are your fleet management system. So this is where you can call up ships. When you click on the menu, it's going to bring you into the fleet view and it's going to show you all the ships you have available to claim. These are the ships that you presently own and they are the ones you can claim. If you have a ship stored at the location where you are, you'll see your current location's name listed next to the ship and you'll have the option to retrieve. Right now I'm flying an Anvil F7C Hornet, which is a combat vessel. It does not have an interior living space, nor does it have a cargo storage area. So this is not a ship that I would use for running delivery missions uh, or for anything where I'm going to be out in space for super extended periods. I'm not going to be logging out from the ship. I will have to return back to a spaceport or a space station or the range point in order to sign out and make sure my ship will be safe. But when it comes to actually getting out into space, I will simply click retrieve. It will tell me where my ship is being delivered and I will go to that location. So when I've called my ship up, you're going to notice that it shows me the location of my ship. It is at hangar one and it's about one and a half kilometers away. We get into the nearest elevator that opens for me. Choose hangar one from my list of locations and the elevator is going to begin moving there. It's a fast elevator because we just went one and a half kilometers, uh, a little under a mile, <laughs> in uh, about six seconds. So very, very fast elevators. And what you're typically going to do is come out into a landing bay and you will either exit through the top of the landing bay or in this case, out the front where the landing bay doors are. I will cover getting around in your ship, basic ship movement and navigation in the next two videos. Stay tuned. If this is your first time visiting my channel, I encourage you to subscribe. And if you want to see my future Star Citizen videos, hit the bell icon to be notified when I post them. If you are one of the 80% of people who've watched my videos in the past and haven't subscribed, now's a good time to do so. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to throw them in the comment section below. I do make an effort to try to respond to everybody who asks a question or makes a suggestion for a video. Thank you, everybody, and I'll see you in the next video.